Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about data macros. We're going to update a last updated field in the table whenever that record is changed using something called a data macro that runs at the table level. Generally, in my classes, I recommend against the use of data macros. What's a data macro? Well, a data macro allows you to put programming at the table level. Usually, this is considered bad database design. It's not something that professional developers use, and I try to avoid it myself. It's usually best to keep all of your coding, all of your VBA, your macros, whatever, at the form level. So your form controls that kind of stuff. The table is supposed to be for just storing data. However, once in a while, it's okay to use a little simple data macro, especially if it's not something that's business critical. For example, one thing that I like to do with a data macro is I like to know when the record was last updated. All right, so if you go to the customer table, for example, let's go to design view. Let's say you want to add a field down here called last updated, and we'll make that a date time value. Okay, now anytime this record is updated, I want that field to get the current date and time. Now, if you've got a lot of different forms in your database that can edit customer T, then it could be a pain putting that code in every one of those forms. Let me save this. For example, even here, I've got a customer list. I could edit here. I've got a customer form. I could edit here, same data. I've got a customer with contacts form. I could edit here. So right here in this database, there's three different forms that I would have to put that code in to update that value, okay? Or you could do it with a data macro. And again, I want to emphasize, don't use data macros for anything that are business critical. This is just something that, you know, I might want to use to look in like the logs and see, okay, when was this customer information updated? Data macros in the past were extremely unreliable, okay, especially when they first came out a few versions ago. Now, how do you build a data macro? Well, go to table design, and then up here, you'll see create data macros. There are a bunch of triggers after insert, after update, a whole bunch of different ones after delete. The one I like is before change, okay? This runs before a record is saved to validate changes. Basically, whenever the record is, is changed, this macro is going to run. So I'm going to click before change. And again, I'm not a huge fan of macros, but this, this, this takes something that could be difficult to code in multiple forms and makes it pretty simple at the table level. Okay, so drop this down and there's a bunch of actions you can take. I'm going to go set field. What's the field name? Well, that's last updated. And what do you want to set it to? Now, the now function. Just like that. Save it, close it, close it, save changes, yep. Now, if you come into the customer table, and if I change Richard Ross to Richard Ross D, okay, tab over to the right, and you'll see there's that last update, it was updated there, see? Or if I change one of these values, let's change this to a nine. Boom, see? It updates right at the table level. If you go into um, a form, like customer list, let's change Deanna Troy to G Deanna Troy Q. Okay, go back to the customer table, find Deanna, there she is right there, and look, it updated there. Or pick one of the other forms. How about uh, the customer with contacts form? Right, country XXX, whatever. Close it, come back into here, and it updated. Okay, it'll also update in a query if you have any queries to change the data. It it's runs at a table level, so anytime this record is modified in this table, that event will run. Usually, I also recommend if you're going to put something in here with a data macro, put a note in the description field, right? This is updated with a data macro uh, when the record is changed. Why? Because if anybody else is going to be using your database, doing developing in it, or you in the future, and you're going to pull your hair out trying to find where in your code, in your VBA, in your four macros, that this thing is updated, put a note to yourself in the description at the table level. 
So when you come in here and you look at it, you remember, oh yeah, I used a data macro. I did this to myself a couple of years ago. I put a data macro on the table. I'm like, what is causing this behavior? I forgot about the data macro. <laughs> and again, I cannot emphasize, keep this to really, really, really simple stuff. Don't rely on it for anything crazy, business, you know, critical functions and stuff like that. Um, you know, they're, use them sparingly. Okay. But it's a cool little trick, especially for something like this. I do cover data macros in more detail in my access advanced level six class. Got all kinds of cool stuff in here. I'll walk you through some of the different types of data macros. And again, that's access advanced level six. I'll put a link down below in the description under the video. You can click on if you're interested in learning more. But that has been your fast tip for today. I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.